Hi there, are you somebody who is stressed? Maybe you're looking for solutions, ways to cope, maybe be more resilient. Perhaps even you're a CEO of a company, maybe HR director, HR manager, and you're looking for immediate relevant solutions. Well, the good news is you've come to just the right place. In this video, which is gonna last about 20, 25 minutes, I'm gonna answer some key questions that people always ask, such as what can I do about stress? And people also wanna know what solutions work the best. I will also be sharing with you some free resources that I developed for companies I've worked with over the last 10 years. And these resources will enable you to do a couple of things. They'll help you to identify the extent of the problem. What is stress costing your business, not just in financial, but also in human terms. The resources will also help you to get everyone on board with solutions. And they will also help you to decide what are the solutions that are gonna work best for you and your particular business. In addition, there's a bonus, a hypnotic meditation, where you can just sit back, pop some headphones on, and listen to it and feel amazingly good for no particular reason. So, really all you have to do now is really quite simple, just keep on watching. Hi there, so welcome. And what I'm gonna do is spend just a couple of minutes explaining how these tools were developed, why they were developed, and how you can use them. I've been coaching for nearly 20 years. In that time, I've worked with over 5,000 people. First 10 years or so, were uh, working with people for therapy issues, mental health issues. And uh, working with people who were anxious, suffering from panic attacks, depressed. I got the chance to work with people who were involved in the destruction of the World Trade Center, during the London bombings and the tsunami. So I've got a lot of experience with working with people who are extremely stressed in its various forms. In the last 10 years or so, the focus has been more on working with people in business. And certainly at the beginning of the recession, there were a lot of stressed people turning up for coaching sessions. And the priority really has been in the last 10 years in helping companies to grow, to be more profitable, to basically make more money. And one of the key things we look at first and foremost is where is the business losing money? Now, I think a lot of people underestimate the real cost of stress. And there's a real misunderstanding about stress. And let me explain what I mean by that. I think stress is a natural human phenomena. It's going to be pr pretty much impossible to eliminate completely from somebody's life. So I think stress is natural, but stressing isn't. So just look at this statement. This is just one of my views. <clears throat> it's excessive stress, it's an educational issue. Very much like obesity. I think obesity is an educational issue. If we were to teach people at an early age how to exercise more and look after their nutrition more, we wouldn't have such an epidemic as we have at the moment. And I think that's the same with stress. So it's an ed educational issue. And the only thing stopping it from being eradicated and I like to aim for that. Let's get the same for eradication. Uh, firstly, an unwillingness to treat it as a serious problem. And secondly, a reluctance to invest in educating management and individuals to work together to eliminate it from the workplace. So it's a combined effort. Management and individuals working together to reduce stress levels, to get it to the point that more people are educated around it and if stress does um, occur in somebody's life, it's not such a major problem. So in the last 10 years, let's say the focus has been working with businesses to help them to grow their uh, business, make it more profitable. And basically what people want more than anything else is more money. They wanna make more money. So one of the first things I do with any coaching clients, whether they're entrepreneurs or MDs, or <clears throat> anyone who's senior in the business, is I get them to do an inventory of how their business is performing. Now, if you're a smart entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, you'll be doing this on a regular basis. Think of being a business owner as being a pilot of an aircraft. And if you're in management, you're one of the co-pilots. If you're flying an aircraft in front of you, you have a whole array of dials and indicators that let you know how the aircraft is performing. It's exactly the same in business. You have your profit and loss, balance sheets, cash flow forecasts, sales projections. You have all these measurements that let you know whether you're on track, off track, whether you need to make course adjustments. 
Now, in all the years I've been coaching people, I haven't yet one person who has what I call a stressometer. Now, a stressometer is an indicator that lets you know how the most valuable resource that you have, which is your people, they are the engines that drive your business. The stressometer lets you know how they're performing. Are they under strain? Are they overwhelmed? Are they about to burn out? Are they leaking fuel? Now, if you were a pilot of an aircraft, you would want to know how your engines are performing. Because if one of the engines does burn out, suddenly you put in a load on all the other engines. You may not even get to your destination. So most entrepreneurs aren't even aware of the problem. It's a blind spot for most people. And this is where we start. So let's have a quick look at some of the statistics. Now, if you are already in HR, you will probably be aware of some of these statistics. So let's just go through them very quickly. 34% of people experience workplace stress. If you're sitting in the office watching this, look around you, it means one out of every three people around you is at some time experiencing workplace stress. It's a huge, huge problem. The average cost per employee for stress is £1,350. That's the average cost, and that's per employee. And we'll come back to that figure, because actually it's a false figure. 45% of days lost to work are due to stress. Nearly half of the time that people take off is stress-related. 17 million workdays are lost to stress in the UK, and it costs the UK economy £24 billion a year. Now, when you look at these statistics, you have to ask yourself the question, well, why aren't more people doing something about stress? And there's a reason for this. If I was in a networking event and um, having a conversation with somebody over a glass of warm white wine, and I was to talk to them about stress and share with them these statistics, now they probably wouldn't say this out loud, but I'm pretty sure that inside their head, they'd be saying something along the lines of, so what? Because the problem with these statistics are, they are too big. They're general. They don't relate personally to the individual. I've met many people on events where they've said, you know, when they ask the question, so what do you do? And I used to say, well, I'm a wellbeing specialist or a stress management consultant. And the conversation would go along the lines of, they go, well, I'm not stressed. I don't see what the problem is. And this is one of the big obstacles that people have when they're looking to put into place stress management solutions is getting people to recognize that there's a problem. In fact, if you're in HR, you, f you face three obstacles. The first obstacle is identifying that there is a problem in the first place. The second obstacle is getting everyone on board with resolving the problem. And the third obstacle is deciding what solutions work. And that's what these free resources and these tools are going to help you to do. They were developed to make sure that these obstacles to helping to eliminate stress in the workplace don't exist. Now, if you're in HR, you will probably encounter these three problems, which I call the three stress monkeys. It's when people don't want to hear about the problem, they don't want to see the facts, and they certainly don't want to talk about the problem. So the first problem that you're gonna to have to deal with is what we call denial. This is where most people will see the facts, they'll see the statistics, but they still won't think that they apply personally to themselves. And there'll be many people in business that will go, yeah, I know about the facts, I've seen it in the paper, but we're going to be okay. Denial is an obstacle that we have to get out of the way. The second obstacle, the second stress monkey, is what's called diffusion of responsibility. This is where Somebody will see that something needs to be done, but it's not their job. You may even encounter this with other heads of department, the head of operations or the head of finances, and they'll go, yes, we know that there's a problem with stress, there's lots of absenteeism, so it's HR's problem. It's not just HR's problem, it's a company-wide problem. Responsibility goes across the board. And the third stress monkey is what's called stigma. Now, stigma, the stress is still associated with people not being strong enough, not being resourceful enough, not being up to the job. And thankfully, stigma has started to change. There's been lots of publicity about it recently. 
However, if stigma is associated, especially at senior level, you may find that there'll be people that do not even want to talk about stress. You see, if you declare and if you reveal to people that you're stressed, quite often it could be seen as a career limiting move, almost like a label that people are stuck with. So the ways to overcome the three stress monkeys are to make it personal. And one of the best ways to make it personal in business is to make it personal and relevant to the pocket, to the bottom line, to finances, to make a financial case for addressing stress. So the first thing you have to do, if you're gonna make a case for resolving a problem is to work out, first of all, what is the problem and what is the cost of the problem? Secondly, what are the costs of inaction, not doing anything about the problem? The third thing to do is to work out what are the solutions that are available and then to calculate what are the costs of the available solutions. And once you're able to do this, you're then able to show a return on investment. So I developed the stress calculator because it will enable you to do exactly that. It will enable you to put together a financial case. Now, the, the link to the stress calculator will take you to my website. You just pop in some uh, facts and some data relevant to your company. And I just want to show you that the data is not stored. So when you log off, that data is completely cleared. And what I've enabled you to do is to calculate the absenteeism costs. Now, as I said earlier on, the average cost uh, based upon the statistics is £1,350 per person. And the absenteeism costs relate to uh, the legacy documents when people basically are off sick. But that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to stress. And that's the problem. A lot of companies just look at the absenteeism, so they don't see the full scale of the problem. What the stress calculator will also enable you to do is to calculate the presenteeism costs. So presenteeism costs are the cost to your business of somebody who is stressed and underperforming and they're still at work. And research shows that presenteeism costs are quite often two to 10 times more than absenteeism costs. Now, when you think about that, you get a sense of the scale of the problem. If you have a salesperson who's stressed and underperforming, they can lose you a lot of business. If you've got somebody in customer care who is stressed or depressed, you could lose a lot of custom. If you've got somebody who is stressed and they're making mistakes, that can cost you a lot. So actually being at work could be more expensive than if they took a day off. There's another cost that most businesses fail to recognize, which is that if somebody is off sick, the business still has to cover the cost of the desks and the phone and the, the office premises. So there's actually a cost to your turnover and there's the profit that they would contribute to making. That's all being lost. There are also additional costs to take into account. Now litigation, as rare as it is, the average litigation cost paid out for somebody who claims under stress management, basically saying that their business failed to look after their health and safety and their well-being, the average cost is 35,000 pounds. You also want to take into account the cost of actually covering for somebody who's sick. If one of the engines goes out in the aircraft, the other engines have to carry the burden. And then the other thing to consider is what if somebody goes, do you know what, I've had enough, I'm out. They hand in their notice, they take early retirement. If you've got valuable talent that you're going to lose, you have the cost of advertising, interviewing, recruiting and training. There's also the cost of morale. When people are stressed and underperforming, other people have to pick up the workload. And also, if you think about staff turnover, at the moment, retaining, acquiring and retaining talent is an essential business skill. And you can often tell when there's a business that has not addressed stress because they tend to have a high staff turnover. So when you use the stress calculator, it will enable you to make the financial case to get a real sense of what the problem is. So we're not talking about vague generality, generalities anymore. We're talking about specifics relevant to your business. This will enable you to firstly identify that there is a problem. And then the next thing for you to look at is 
a process where you get everyone on board working together to resolve stress. And to help you to do that, I've written an ebook. It's called The Ultimate Blueprint for Creating Your Stress Management Plan. It's a guide that you can take yourself and your team through, which will first of all help you to make the case. So everyone understands the financial implications of stress, helps you to raise uh, the awareness of the three stress monkeys to make sure that nobody in the room is ignoring stress, is suffering from denial, diffusion of responsibility, and there's no stigma associated with it. In fact, the coaching plan will help you to create the right conditions for success. It will also enable you to design a plan that suits your business. And this is important because there is no one size plan that fits every company. You will have your own idiosyncratic, unique working practices. You'll have your own unique solutions to whatever is causing stress in your workplace. So download the ebook, work your way through that, and it'll give you everything you need to create a plan that's fit for purpose. So of course, when you're designing your plan, you also have to decide what solutions are you going to apply? You need to look at what's going to work for you. Now, the default setting for most people when they're looking for stress management solutions is to go straight to the health and safety executive and to look at the management standards. The management standards are the criteria that the health and safety executive put together in 2007 to help businesses to work on changing their working practices in order to eliminate stress. And they identified six stressors, which are demand, control, support, relationship, role, and change. And as important as all of these stressors are, they do make a difference. There is a statistic on the HSE website which tells a story. So just look at this. This is taken from the HSE's website, and this line here says, the statistics remain broadly flat, but have shown some fluctuations. So Despite the management standards, despite all the tools and the techniques that help companies to change their working practices, not much has changed. Now, when I first saw this, firstly, I was shocked, and then I wasn't surprised. And there's a reason for that, because the management standards focus upon strategies, what people do. They fail to take into account mindset. There are two solutions to stress. The first is looking at the working practices, how you do what you do. The second is mindset, is the thinking behind what people do. And changing working practices will only change about 20% of the stress that's, that's occurring in your business. The remainder, the 80%, is down to mindset. Now, I just want to demonstrate to you why it's so important to ensure that you cover working practices and mindset. You can have two people in the same situation. So let's say, for example, we have two school teachers. They've got similar classes. They've got the same sort of demand, control, support, relationship. They have the same roles. They have to deal with the same changes. And one is stressed and one isn't. It's got nothing to do with working practices or management standards. It's to do with their mindset. One has a poor mindset, they struggle, they're overwhelmed, they're fatigued, they're anxious. And the other has a well-being mindset. They're able to cope, they're more calm, they're more productive, they're more resilient. Mindset is the key, it's the difference that makes the difference. And when it comes to mindset, some people have naturally developed a well-being mindset. So it's not the person with the poor mindset is any worse than the person with a well-being mindset they just haven't had the education and the, and the training yet now when i first decided to focus on well-being i did my duty of care i did my research and i looked at what was out there what was available in the marketplace i wanted to research the competition and i also researched with my clients what did they want and what did they need that they didn't even know that they needed and what I discovered was there is just so much stuff and nonsense out there that really quite makes it confusing for most people who are looking for solutions to stress. You can find endless lists of things to do, such as take a walk, take a break, have a holiday, work from home, don't work from home. And as useful as all of these tips are, they do help to alleviate stress. They don't really teach people about mindset. And then the other options are to do courses such as a CBT course or a mindfulness course. 
And again, fantastic, they do work, but they do require people to invest time and commit until they master those skills. So it's a very confusing market for most people unless they already know what it is they're looking for. So what I'd like you to do is to really get this idea that the best practice is looking for what works. Now, what works is never one thing. I've been a coach for two decades and if CBT was the only skill that was needed to help people to de-stress, I would just be doing CBT. If mindfulness was the only approach that would help people to de-stress and everyone was able to do it, I would just be doing mindfulness. The same with NLP. So the best approach is one that addresses a degree of looking at your working practices and mindset, but from a multidisciplinary approach. It's the multidisciplinary approach looking at NLP, hypnosis, coaching, CBT, psychosensory approaches. That's what works. So when you're putting your stress management plan together and you're looking for solutions, give people a choice. One person will find NLP works for them and they may not resonate with mindfulness and somebody else might find that CBT is just the right thing for them. So remember to keep your mind open and to be flexible. So let's just have a recap of what we've done so far. The three obstacles facing most HR people are first of all, getting people to identify it and to recognize the scale of the problem. Second is getting everybody on board with solutions. And thirdly is deciding what solutions work. So I hope in this very short video, I've given you some food for thought, giving you some ideas that will help point you in the right direction. Remember, you can access your free resources You can get the stress calculator. You can download your ebook and you can also listen to the hypnotic recording, How to Easily Relax Deeply. Just simply pop some headphones on, sit back and allow yourself to drift off into a wonderfully relaxed state. So I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please make use of the resources. If there's somebody else out there that you know will actually benefit from them, please share them as well. And I wish you every success with reducing, even eliminating stress from your workplace and helping your people to cope and to be more resilient. Thank you for watching.